Good morning, Amsterdam. Hey. It is absolutely amazing to be here. And you look around this room, and there is a wealth of IoT expertise waiting to change the world and to become our own heroes in our world. I'm going to spend the last next 20 minutes just really sharing with you some personal experience, my personal journey of starting to become someone who people, for some reason, think knows something about IoT. And people, my clients, a lot of my peers and people I work with actually think that I am an IoT expert. To be honest, I think I'm a bit of a fraud. So I'd love to share with you some of that and hopefully give you inspiration for figuring out that we all need help. We all need to work together to make this thing happen. But if we do, we have a real shot at becoming real heroes. Um, I picked a picture from uh, Iron Man because if you think about Tony Stark, he's one of the superheroes that did not grow up with all of the superpowers. He just happened to be stuck somewhere with a bunch of metal, some cube computer, and some technology, and he put something together that made him super. And I think we can all do that in our own lives, in our own work, if we uh, put together the right pieces. So just a little bit about myself. Um, essentially, I'm a software guy. I've spent the last 20 years selling to big corporates, um, making projects to help make data more useful and make it you know, easier to, to, to automate processes in enterprises. When I started looking at IoT, I knew nothing about electronics, I knew nothing about radios, and I knew very little about network. All the stuff about protocols and all of that stuff completely went over my head. But interestingly enough, over the last three years, I've actually found that I could really kind of drop the suit a little bit and start to let my inner geek come out. So I'm going to do a bit of that today. So let, let, let's start at the beginning. The first thing you're going to need to know about if you want to be credible on IoT is sensors. There's a lot of people here, um, starting from obviously the, the people that make the chips, the Samsex of the world, people that make the modules, you know, the arms and uh, microchip and so forth. You're going to need to work with them to kind of really understand how it is that we're going to acquire data. data. And you're going to need to start learning about things that you may not want to put your hands in. Uh, I certainly didn't. This is just an example. Um, when I asked um, TrackNet at the time for help with, OK, we've got these devices that um, are in the US. How do we change them over to work in Asia? And, and, and I wish I hadn't asked that question. <laughs> so this is the kind of uh, documentation I got. And I kind of think, you know what, we, we need some help there. Next thing you're going to need to learn about is, is networks. At the end of the day, if we don't have a solid ne network of gateways, um, you will not get the information out of the devices. So again, getting familiar with how gateways operate, how the network server um, will uh, enable you to pick up that data and, and, and transmit it around to your application is absolutely essential. Starting to think about the, the radio penetration, the coverage you're going to need, whether you're going to want to use a public network, whether you're going to use a private or dedicated uh, solution, this is an essential part of being able to create the solutions for your clients that will, um, that will work. And of course, that in some instances will mean you'll have to get into some of the Linux um, commands on, on the gateways that, again, you may not have done before. So uh, get ready to, to learn. The next piece, of course, and we just had a, a great talk on this, is the whole security. There is a lot to learn, and there's a lot of capabilities in LoRaWAN protocol, but you're not going to need, you, you can't ignore those. They are extremely important to make sure that whatever solution you build will not get hacked, will not get um, you know, deprecated and, and, and become um, not working because you've got someone who's interfering with your signal and so forth. So again, being able to find the right resources that are going to help you along that route is absolutely critical to go and, and be successful. Sensors in and of themselves are not generating a huge amount of data. You know, most of the, the payloads that we see are 11 bytes. 
But guess what? If you have thousands or millions of sensors, and also, you got to think about all of the metadata that you're going to be associating with that, that raw payload. The data sets you're going to have increases very, very, very quickly. Um, so this is really where we're starting to become into my area of, uh, of expertise on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all about making sure that we have the right storage capabilities, the right ways to filter through that data quickly and kind of get to the information that's useful without losing along the way some really valuable information. To the reality is in my world, I'm mostly worrying about what is the information my client wants, the insight that comes out of the sensor. So I could kind of say, well, you know what, I'm going to ignore all of that metadata about network performance and RSSI and SNR. I can just dump that. Well, that'd be stupid. You want to try and keep all of that data because even if it's not useful to your core value right now, I don't need that for my client to know what temperature is in their building. But that information over time is going to become really helpful to optimize things like your network. And potentially, other people might be interested in, in, in buying that data from you. So th don't think about just the data that you need. Try and, and think from the beginning what other information is coming out there and how do I make sure I don't lose sight of that. The next piece you're going to need is some really good front-end application development skills. You've got to obviously present information on something that your clients and your end users will want to interact with. And that obviously, in some instances, will mean native iOS or Android development, web apps, just, you, you name it. So having some really good graphical skills, some UX, and some JavaScript and, and front-end developers is absolutely critical to basically make sure that um, all of the hard work we're doing to censor up things ends up actually in the hand of someone and in a way that they are going to want to interact with it uh, very regularly. The next chunk is really my core day-to-day -day life. Uh, this is what I wake up in the morning worrying about. It's all about making sure that we think and we cater for the whole privacy and the compliance issues that are going to be raised with gathering data about the spaces, about people, about where things are. There's a huge amount of um, risks that the information could be used for different purposes if it's not protected in the right way. At the same time, we are big believers that there are multiple people that would love to potentially access information that comes out from, from sensors. Um, think about a building like this. Yes, of course, us, as we are using the conference today, we may want to have some information about what is going on. Likewise, the uh, person who owns the building over time wants to know how well this uh, space is being utilized. And then potentially, some other third parties, like an insurance company or a utility, would also want to know how the building is utilized. These are lots of different people with very different reasons for accessing the data. We're going to make sure that we have an easy way to uh, allow them to get that. And of course, you overlay something like regulations, you know, think GDPR or healthcare, uh, if you're monitoring people's health. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of science that goes into making sure that we protect and record who has access to information over time. Uh, to not lose sight of it. The next part is about integration. Again, information might be useful in the dashboard. It might be useful to generate an alert. In a lot of instances, that information will be more valuable if it can be then passed on to other systems of record or other applications that would be benefit from um, utilizing it in a, in a, in a different manner. Classical example, for instance, in smart building, if you put up environment sensors that monitor the end temperature and the humidity, as we do routinely uh, with our clients, the first use for people is going to be maybe an app that allows them to very quickly know what's going on. But that same information could be feeding existing systems they have, such as a building management system, which suddenly gives them more rich information to be able to control the, uh, uh, the heating and ventilation system. So it's a very simple example, but you'll find that being able to easily expose the information that you're gathering and creating is a critical part uh, of the success. 
The next piece is about creating more insights rather than pure data. And that's where we're going to get into the realm of analytics, AI, and machine learning. Again, part of our journey is we maybe naively thought when we started our, our IoT experiences that people would be happy with you know, actually getting some of, the, some of the data into a dashboard and generating alerts. Um, and we came to realize that most clients wanted to go beyond that and that we had to start thinking about the next level and actually saying, well, actually, we need to have tools and, and ready-made solutions to really look at trends and start um, maybe picking holes, for instance, where the data was not as clear as it should be, um, and sort of um, really go beyond just pure presentation of the information. If this is a topic of interest, one of my colleagues, um, our chief data scientist, will be uh, doing a talk tomorrow morning at 10.20 in the other uh, theater. And, and I very much encourage you to, to, to find out. And the final piece that um, you also need to start realizing is that no matter what your IoT product is, it is going to be used in very different ways depending on the industry of your client. A very simple example, we do a lot of occupancy um, and people counting for um, corporate real estate. If you think about my client being an office, being a shopping center, or being an airport, they might use this, the exact same technology, the same sensors, the same network, and the same application. The reason for them to want to use that, that solution is very different. The business driver is very, very different. And I can't be an expert about offices, airports, and shopping centers. So it's very important for me to work with people that really understand those business domains and help them, obviously, with uh, uh, solutions that bring them to uh, a better outcome for their, for their client that's specific to that industry. So if we kind of roll out a little bit the entire chain of value, this is really the kind of expertise you're going to need to be successful in IoT. You get to start from sensors, think about how you're going to have the right networks, whether they're public or private. You're going to think very carefully about securing the whole thing end to end. Have a very strong big data partner to uh, keep and store that data for for the future, have some very slick application developers that will make the e data easy to, to, to manipulate, think very carefully about the privacy, the compliance elements, have the capability to then also expose that data to, to other parties, and to, uh, to then harvest with machine learning and artificial intelligence for more insights than, than the raw data. And then finally, you have to wrap that all with the business domain expertise. So, I got to say, I, don't, I have yet to meet anyone who can be an expert at all those things. That is just not going to happen. So the only way we get successful, we get real traction, and we start you know, becoming the heroes we all want to be is by building very strong partnerships. Uh, and that's where, obviously, this sort of conference, that's where the, the Leroy Alliance you know, represents all parts of this ecosystem. So from people that build the chips and the modules to people that are building the sensors, people that are running networks, people that are like myself, you know, building platforms to make it easy to handle the data. And then, you know, we're going to need a lot more system integrators to kind of come together and say, you know what, I really understand the hotel industry and I'd love to take you along my journey, use all of the bricks that you've developed into my industry. That is the way we're going to get traction. That's the way we're going to keep changing the world with this technology. And this is what I got for you today. So I'd love to. Uh, Welcome, any questions? Thank you very much, Charles Iron Man. <laughs> any questions or remark or, or theories, suggestions, anything? Uh, Charles, you, you worked in many different areas. Uh, which one did you like most? Actually, my favorite part is, is, is the very last one. Um, it's when you actually get into a new industry that you may not have uh, known before and you talk with a client that has a really specific problem and you happen to be able to put together a solution based on all of the other parts. When you actually bring it together and actually solve someone's problem with all of our technology but actually focus on their day-to-day -day life and suddenly they change their perspective on how they can be more efficient or more productive, use less energy. That's, that's what gets me out of bed mostly. Yes. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last couple of questions. Thank you very much. Charles Pulu. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry.